It's gonna be a sticky one right to the end. A whole parcel don't get it. Um, just because their fans do my editing. Can we just talk about Man United bottling it a bit more? Hello and welcome to Last Fan Standing. My name is Flav and this is a free round football debate show where points are given for opinions on the show this week. We have Adam McCola, Paul Machin and Lee Judges. And what we're talking about is the race for the top four. If you're new to Last Fan Standing or you've been here a while and you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. It really, really does make a difference. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're talking about the top four this season, the race that is in currently being run. In the round one, we are talking about which team will get over the line. Um, Lee, I won't start with you because I think you're going to be the most happiest this week. So um, let's let's go to someone who doesn't have a dog in the fight. Paul. I thought you was going to come to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Man United... <laughs> I, I was going to, but Man United, Man United still can do it. You're not mathematically oh, out. God. You're not a mathematically out. you got more out. confidence in my team than me, that's for sure. <laughs> I haven't. I watched you. I watched the game against Arsenal. I was <laughs> sick. I was sick at your performance. It was terrible. Um, actually, no, apparently you played all right. But, but Paul, um, who do you think will get... Not, I know you don't, it's, you, you, know, you don't really care, but who, who do you think will get... No, no, don't be like that. I don't just don't care yeah, about I know you. the actual football teams involved, but I don't not care about who finishes in the top four. No, I, 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 I've I, gone a flip-flop between Arsenal and Spurs for a few weeks now. We went back on a show um, a couple of weeks ago and went through the fixtures, and Arsenal were kind of sitting pretty. They had the games in hand, uh, and it looked like it was all just coming up Arsenal at the right time. And then... All of a sudden, you know, obviously, you guys turn the corner a bit. Spurs look like they're in the ascendancy. Look like they've got the the better match winners. Kane's fan goal scoring for them. Him and Son, everyone's raving about them as a partnership again. But yeah, it just looks like Arsenal, man. I've just just clinging on for dear life. I think that game between Arsenal and Spurs is going to be pivotal in it all. But it's definitely advantage Arsenal. I don't think there's any other way of looking at it. But I still have that feeling that. When it comes down to it, right at the end of the season, having those been there and done it, tried and tested superstars can get you out of trouble unless you're Manchester United. So Spurs yeah. might be all right. Lee, um, go on then, because uh, you, you, I mean, it has been a strange old last few months. Spurs were flying, Arsenal looked like they were faltering, and then the last two games, two huge, massive results, especially the one against Chelsea. Mm. How do you feel? Yeah, I feel a little bit confident now after that Chelsea game. I think the Chelsea game was pivotal for us, really, because I, football, you can't really... I don't predict anything now after what's gone on the last few games. It, like last week, Man United were the, the, the happier team because Arsenal and Spurs lost. The week before that, Man United and Arsenal lost, so Tottenham were happy. This week, we're happy because all of you dropped points. But listen, you know, football's a funny thing. I thought we played really, really well on, on Wednesday and deserved a win against Chelsea. I honestly thought Manchester United were the better side on um, on Saturday. I think luck sometimes plays a big part, and you know that penalty miss. Thank you, Bruno. If he takes that and scores that and doesn't hop and Changes skip, it. what about, well, what about going forward, Lee? Though, what what what? How 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 will it pan out? Who, who, massive who? massive couple of games coming up now. If we can beat West Ham away, Tottenham uh, have got Leicester, and then if we can beat Leeds at home. Then it comes down to the good old scousers of Liverpool. If they can get us a result and hope they win, then we go into that North London derby Hold five on. points. Five think, points you, in front. You, you think Spurs can get, get a point at, uh, at Anfield? Don't worry about that. You, listen, you're listen, I'm going to say this now. Um, it, Tottenham are a better counter-attacking team than anybody. And if they defend like Everton did yesterday and then with the Pope and people up front, who knows? So I'm not going to say that um, that's, a, that's a foregone conclusion. So You've got a man to sitting one. If I had to push you for a prediction, though, I know the games are important and obviously there's many, many different uh, machinations about what might happen, but what's, what's your prediction? I, I, I just think if Arsenal win their next two games, Arsenal will get it. Adam. Yeah. Um, like commiserations, obviously, you're not really in the, in, in the race anymore, but, um, you know, go on. No, it's I, not commiserations because... Like once you just we gave up on a season ages ago. I mean the players did, the fans have. Um, top four was never really realistic to me when I saw some of the results that were going down. I mean this is a team that have dropped five points to um, Watford this season. Like five points to this poor Leicester. 
Spurs have lost points dropped six Burnley. points to Manchester United this season. Yeah, mate. We, we beat <laughs> we Arsenal as well at Old Trafford, but we can't, we, we're, we're, we're not good enough. Um, and I think too much has gone on. Something's gone on. And it's clearly this dressing room made together and we're not going to get anything. Um, but in terms of it, I think it is a North London basically chase for the for the top fourth spot. Um, I kind of agree with Paul in that. I do think that the derby in the end will probably decide it, uh, more or less. But I've got a feeling for Arsenal. I don't know. I thought every time I think Arsenal are out of it, every time I think they're out of it, I think they lose three games on the spin, then they go and beat Chelsea, back that up with a, another win against Manchester United. That's six points that, like, I half thought we might draw with them, so that might be four points, you know, one point out of six or something. But to get six points out of six in those two games, having just dropped so many points, I think has pulled them right back into it and made them favourites again. Mm. Um, because Spurs are obviously not guaranteed three points every week and that's why all these teams are, are involved down there because they're not guaranteed three points they are going to drop points so it's going to be a sticky one right to the end a whole parcel don't get it um just because their fans do my editing um and i don't know any spurs Welcome fans apart from apart from you and craig mitch so um <laughs> yeah um <laughs> Okay, for the scores for round one, Lee has 10, Adam also has 10, and Paul has nine. Ooh, a bit harsh on Paul now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, round two, who will bottle it most? Lee, I'll give you the floor. This is Spurs. Can we bottle it if we're not in the lead at this stage? I don't know. No, it just seems, I've got to be honest, whoever, whoever goes into the lead seems to bottle it. Like, you know, whoever gets fourth place, it seems to get uh, to bottle it. I think that um, Tottenham had a fantastic chance to, to nail it, really, uh, this weekend. Didn't, and well, Brighton, no, to right, be honest, yeah. Brighton and Brentford, you know, two games there, so you only get one point out of that. That, that is bottling of the highest. Good uh, side, though, good that. sides. Order, good order, side. highest order, that is the highest order. But then you can say that about Arsenal. But if there is to be a big, the, the ones that, but Manchester United should never be in the position that they are. And, you know, they're now going towards, slipping towards the conference, the conference, Manchester United. Couldn't happen to a better club. Might win a game, yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never get a little bite. I'm never get a little bite. I, you know, I, I, really I, I just, I think given the fact that if you're looking Mate, at the whole season in terms of we the top Top four. Uh, we, if you're looking at the top four seat, t top race for the top four from the start of the season, Man United have got to be considered the biggest bottle jobs here because um, they, like it shouldn't. Have, we shouldn't have even. It shouldn't have even been a, a race thing. It shouldn't have even been a. Oh, who's going to get fourth? United should have just been. Who's going to get third with Chelsea? Like it shouldn't have even been coming down to this. Even when you look at the fact that the way Arsenal have dropped points, Spurs have dropped points, even with us being rubbish and having an interim manager when you look at the teams that we drop points against we dropped three points at old trafford about a week before villa sat their manager it's like we i think everton got a point at old trafford not long before they sat rafa benitez we just dropped stupid points all over the gaff so yeah yeah united but united have bottled it the most out of everyone who are the biggest bottle jobs out of these two i think spurs are well that's I not the question Arsenal it's not what? who's at, who, the question. I, it's not, I realise we're the biggest bottle jobs. I'm asking you who will bottle the top four race. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> this is again hope rather than expectation, like many of my predictions. <laughs> 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 um, I hope Spurs do it. I think I think Arsenal could bottle it. I hope they, they bottle they, it. They're in a situation where they, 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 the pressure is on for sure. Paul, what? What, um, what, what are you saying? There's it's no gone. pressure on them though because for two years, yeah, back to back they had eighth, yeah. No one was saying nothing. They were all going on like, like the geezer was amazing. What yeah. I will say is, like all these Arsenal fans in my mentions and that, just relax a little bit because this team, you'll see the real team next year. You'll probably finish eighth again. Um, Arsenal fans don't relax online, mate. Come on, <laughs> hey, good point, well, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, I love they do. They get on Twitter and they just charge themselves up, don't they? Ah, they're screaming in the mirror before they go on Twitter. Ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah strong, cheers, man. Strong, strong online presence. That's a good. That's a. That's a. That's a quote. Um, yeah, I. Uh, I think this is going to end up a bit like the end of Rocky. Is it Rocky? Is it Rocky Two? Rocky Two? Is it right. where they where they have like where they both end up on the on the on the deck? Yeah, and you know like the, that, that's what that's what 
that's what Arsenal and Spurs are like. No one's going to be a clear winner. It's going to be it's going to be a cross between that and the end of Disney Cars, where it's like someone has to stick the tongue out and the person who's got the longest tongue effectively gets into the top four. Um, no one's going to stride comfortably into that position. It's going to be a nightmare along the way. Um, but yeah, look, I should. I, can we just talk about Man United bottling it a bit no, more? No, no, no. Come on. I think, I think Listen, let's, 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 let's talk about Real Spurs and Arsenal. Because the last time like, these lot were in a two horse race. They finished race. the ball. If they finish well, the Liverpool, that means they're better than Liverpool. The, well, that that, oh uh, free, the, that we, free horse race thing has, has statistically not lost, we were. It hasn't lost That's on me because it, it would. I, I can kind of see a world where we do lose a couple of games, uh, and so do Arsenal. I mean, Manu you like, live in that world, bro. What do you mean you could see a world? You live in that world. That is my world, and, <laughs> and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm completely comfortable in it. And what I would say, what I would say is that don't be surprised when Man United go on a charge and finish above certainly Tottenham but maybe even Arsenal as well you're saying you're out of it but maybe not and if, if you are then we're both bold but I think if this term- Manchester United finish in the conference league positions which is the stuff it's of been a good dream. season look there's a potential world here and I don't want to get ahead of myself season. and I think everyone should cross <laughs> their fingers and toes if this happens Liverpool could win a quadruple Man United could end up in the conference league and Everton could get relegated I might have to give up football um, it's done. It's done. done it. Football it's done. Almost completed. Stick a fork in Liverpool with it, Dan. I'll say <laughs> no, that. That's it. Just, just wind it up. Look how smug. Look how smug Paul is as well. We need to turn on him, lads. I think. Yeah. <laughs> he's, got that, he's just sitting there, just happy, going for a Premier League title. Uh, don't you just hate oh. people being happy? Absolutely. No, no. Makes Great sick. Joke. Paul's Did face right now like makes me absolutely us. sick. Yeah. Look at him. Look at just him. Smug. Look how happy he is. I can make happy content every day. <laughs> So the scores after round two, Lee has 24, Paul has 23, and Adam has 22. Quite close. So the final round, who needs it most? Who needs top four the most? Obviously, it's solved. it seems like an obvious question, but some clubs can kind of recover and rebound without Champions League football, and what others need need the money and, and need the infrastructure and need that that boost. Um, Lee, go on. What, how, who's it more important for, for the overall progression of the football club? Well, that's a really, really tough question. I think that probably maybe Spurs do after the stadium being built in the last couple of years and all the pandemic and everything like that. That would be the only reason that I would probably put Spurs in. Now, Arsenal need it because um, just to, just for the for the uh, I think to sign players and everything like that. But the infrastructure and the financial side of it, I think we're we're not too bad. Man United, well, you know they're not going to get it, are they? So who cares? But um, I, I think we've. Um, I think that's a tough question, like you know what I mean. Who really knew? I, I don't know. That's a tough, tough one. But do, do you know? Like Spurs. A, from from my perspective, I would say that Arsenal need it more than Spurs because because of the stadium. Um, our financial position is is fantastic as well, but obviously we don't spend as freely as other clubs. Um, but especially if we can keep Conte and keep hold of him, I think players will come for him. With Paratici's contract, uh, contacts in I- Italy, we're going to be able to sign players. I don't think next season is dependent on Champions League football for us, how well we do. I if think do Arsenal need it. I think Arsenal need it the most. I think it's the project. And the, 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 my concern with Arsenal is that I think they've, they've done brilliantly so far. They've whittled away loads of the dead wood. You know, they've been quite quite brutal in how they've, in how they've done that. Um, in a brilliant way, by the way, I think it's shortcutted them. You know, they're, they're, they're a couple of seasons ahead of Manchester United just by taking uh, extreme action in squad management. But they've got those; they've got such brilliant young players. But I think they need a couple of gems to add to that. And when you, if you, if you're not shopping in that top top market. I wonder whether they can get the players that are really gonna really gonna kick them on. You know that they need a centre forward. I think in the top bracket in world football, and if you if you're in a competition with other teams who are in the Champions League for that player, they're gonna miss out on that player. I mean, you saw it with their Vlajevic in January already. You know those players are gonna go to cast iron guarantees, and then what of course starts to happen is you've seen it with Leicester is that if you, if you miss out once or twice, it, it starts to destabilise what's happened at the football club. And then all of a sudden, people start to look at your players as well. And all of a sudden, Liverpool had this with Coutinho, they had it with Chan. 
you've been at the club four or five years and you don't think you're guaranteed anything and all of a sudden Saka and Martinelli and Odegaard and Smith Rowe start to get that temptation around other football clubs that's my that's what I think Arsenal need it because I think they're on the rise and I think they'll put Man United in the rear view mirror for a few seasons if they do but if they don't I think it makes it a lot closer Okay, Lee, what, what, how do you respond to that? Because he's basically saying that you... Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's a fantastic point. I have to say that, like, you know, but I do think that somewhere along the line, we've got some really, really young players and things like that. So um, I think maybe um, Champions League could be a little bit too near for them, like where, where we can get a few players br- uh, blooded in the Europa League and things like that. But ultimately, we've got a chance of getting there. And I do agree with, with that with a couple of signings, but... I think with the young players we've got, I don't think Champions League, I, I think we'll get players because of the, the project that we've got there. I think that with Tottenham, I think it's a shorter term project. You know, we've Conte a couple of years. If, if they don't get it this season, I honestly think Conte will go. If, if Tottenham don't get top four, I do think he'll go. Um, Adam, there's no chance that a, a player of, 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 of any significant quality would choose Arsenal over Spurs, is there? Um... Well, there's a lot of reasons why. I mean, well, it's not, is there? There just isn't. I'm sure there isn't. I mean, sure there isn't. but he's got a finger think... on the button, by the way. The points button. Remember this. <laughs> yeah. It's a I, question, mean, I mean, it's he's that the down the side, boy. He jumped into the game earlier. I bet he's on the scoreboard as well now. He just he just starts <laughs> wading in. Like, he asked for your opinion. Ask Sorry. the questions, man. Go um, Sorry. What I was going to say, I, I, I genuinely think, I don't want to look at it at financial level. I'm bored of talking about finances. I'm bored of talking about boards and all that stuff. I have enough of the at my club. I want to look at but from a football perspective. When I look at it, who needs it more? In my opinion, I think Arteta needs it more than the current manage, manager base like at Spurs because there's no guarantee Conte is going to be there next season. So if he leaves and you've got a new manager, you've got a fresh start anyway. Um, and you used to be in the Europa League, so that's perfectly fine. As for Arsenal, I think after two seasons of back-to-back eighth place, I think, and having been in a position where fourth was almost felt like it's theirs on a couple of occasions, if they don't get that, what does that say about Arteta? Do people then start lumping, uh, like, you know, uh, pressure on him? Do people start talking about, you know, him potentially leaving and him bottling it, etc., etc.? It's going to affect what players they can attract. And next season then, once he has Europa League football in it, I think you could be looking at another potential eighth place finish. So I think Arsenal are the ones that need it more than, Arteta's Arsenal need it more than Conte Spurs, in my opinion. So the win this week is Lee on 41. Hopefully the only thing he does win this season. Paul, 39, and Adam on 36 points. Congratulations, Lee. What a great weekend. What a great weekend. I'm more than happy to say that. Thank you very much. I love you guys. You made me sick. (laughs) Well, one again, what can I say? So here we go. So my my beef today is what I'm going to talk about is VAR again. And what is when the actual game's going on, as a match going fan, you actually do not see what's going on when the goal is scored. So a goal is scored, it comes up, um, checking goal. I watch now the last game of, uh, at the Emirates, four minutes, it's a, and I'm just standing around as a fan, why everybody in the whole world can see what's going on. You actually can go into the bar if you want and see it from there on the screens there. So everybody in the whole world is seeing what's happening apart from the match game fan on the day. And I think it's wrong. And then also, like I get the contentious decision, so like if it's a sending off or, or, or whatever, don't have to show that. But when it's a goal, it's a goal. Four minutes at the Emirates, it took this time. The game before, five minutes of just standing around, not knowing what's going on when everybody else is there. And as a match game fan paying money, I'm on my mobile phone with people sending me messages going, oh, this could be offside or not. It's wrong, it's got to stop. A match going fan deserves better and it deserves to see what's going on, whether it's a goal or not. That's it for another week of Last Fan Standing. Remember, if you're still here, hit subscribe. Do it now and like. Do, do both those things. Take just one second. Just one second. Just do it. See you next week. Last Fan Standing.